Hello. So obviously the George Not Found situation is pretty old news at this point, but I keep seeing people talking about it and people are now accusing him of being a misogynist. You guys probably know where I saw that. I actually did really want to talk about this just for whatever reason. I always think that like my videos have to be this like super like high production, like thoroughly researched like thing instead of me just like talking and voicing my still informed opinion but i wanted to talk about this as someone who does tend to initially have a little bit of a bias towards the accuser just as like a fellow girl who has like experienced creepy experiences it would suck for everyone to call you a liar if something did actually happen to you. Also, false accusations in my experience in the real world are pretty rare, so it's just kind of a habit. But I do think that I keep a very rational mindset when going into, like, looking into these things. I'm not, like, a super emotionally driven person, so it's, like, pretty easy for me to kind of leave my feelings behind and, like, have a pretty, like, clear perspective because of these personal feelings though it makes me all the more upset when accusations turn out to be faulty because then I'm just like I think it's really important to support victims but it makes people so much less inclined to do that when there's people who have lied before it also enables those who want to actually like not believe victims regardless of what the truth is because it gives them like the perfect evidence to like back up their beliefs. It's just really dangerous to like any movement overall, which really enrages me. So George not found in Katie Bugs. What do I think? I think it was definitely blown out of proportion. And I it pains me to kind of say that because I don't like being on this side of these situations, but it's a little fishy. I do believe her when she says that the situation left her feeling uncomfortable just as a girl who has been 18. I probably would have felt uncomfortable after like cuddling with a 26 year old man despite how I was like feeling in the moment. Especially since she mentions how that was her first intimate experience ever which honestly was just really humbling for me. We're like the exact same age. She's like a week older than me, exactly, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, so I can empathize with her feeling uncomfortable. However, to say she was a victim of a crime is a little insane. After listening to all sides and gathering all the perspectives and listening to people who were there, it's very clear to me that this is just a huge, gigantic misunderstanding. Here's my take, and this is kind of controversial to both sides, but I think that you can feel like you've been essayed without actually technically being essayed. Do you know where I'm going? Like, anything could make anyone feel uncomfortable but that doesn't necessarily always mean that any wrongdoing was done, you know? I believe George, when he says that he had no idea that she was 18, just based on, like, the evidence that he presented, it really kind of showed that he really didn't have any idea. Also, the way that I say really, the way that Leafy says literally is so, such a problem. And don't worry, I hear it in myself. I'm working on it. I got, I'm getting rid of the likes. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't say like as much anymore, I don't think. 18 is like a little irrelevant because 18 is still a consenting adult. It's not illegal in any way. It would be a little weird if he knew, just because 26 and 18 is kind of a suspicious gap, but like in a legal sense, didn't really do anything wrong. From what I can tell, George really truly did not have any way of seeing that she was uncomfortable or uncomfortable in the situation. She said that all the time she was laughing with him was just because of her nerves, but he had no way of making that distinction. Like if someone's laughing, they're just laughing. And they were amongst like a lot of people who were already in like the creator space. So he probably wasn't considering power imbalance that much considering he was under the impression that everyone there was established creators and not fans. For anyone who has been under a rock the last month, Katie Bugs accused George not found that after they were cuddling for like 
an hour and flirting and playing with each other um he like reached underneath her shirt and he says that he did not touch her tits she says that he did so but she did not originally say tits she didn't specify to be clear I think that it was reasonable for George to assume that since she was not displaying any discomfort in the situation, that things would just kind of naturally, like, progress to, like, more skin-to-skin touching, which isn't really sexual, in my opinion. Like, I think it's just, like, I guess kind of intimate, but... I don't really see that as a sexual act. This isn't me trying to say that Katie shouldn't have felt uncomfortable because people can't really help what they're uncomfortable about. And like I said earlier, she had never had like an intimate experience. But for most people, that isn't really something that is viewed as that big of a deal, which is probably where George was coming from because he's used to probably more experienced adults and like wasn't really thinking about that. That's where it's kind of important to set boundaries when you're uncomfortable with something. Not to say that consent is completely irrelevant, just most adults aren't used to asking to touch someone when they've been cuddling for an hour. I do feel bad for Katie because it does kind of seem like the situation has affected her a bit, but I think that the way it was handled was completely unacceptable. I need lip gloss. Hold on. This definitely should have been considered a misunderstanding rather than a crime taking place. It's really damaging to accuse George of being some sort of danger to society when he didn't actually do anything dangerous. The only thing that I think George could have done differently is I think it was a little dumb to not ask for her age, but he did have reason to believe that they were coming from a 21 plus party and that she was able to get into this 21 plus party. So I think in like a different context, he probably would have asked for ages, but I think it was like reasonable for him to assume that they were in their twenties. In my personal opinion, I think Katie was kind of coerced to come out by those around her who don't like Dream and his friends. I have a feeling that she confided in someone that she was kind of uncomfortable with the situation and then they convinced her that it was like SA and that she needs to come out with her story because it's like a big deal. Not saying that it wasn't a big deal for Katie, but it's not a big deal to society. You know, it's not a PSA that needs to be announced. Honestly, it almost seems like sabotage towards Katie because I don't know how anyone would think that that could go in her favor because it kind of sucks because I don't know if she's ever really going to be able to reestablish herself as like a member of that community because this like really genuinely went so wrong for her that I don't think anyone's going to let her live it down which kind of sucks for her. I just don't know how anyone thinks that that could have worked in their favor. What I am dying to know is what the deal is with that screenshot that was proved to be untrue. Katie had a claim partnered with a screenshot that claimed that one of George's friends who was there in the moment had actually sent a text to someone exclaiming how he was uncomfortable with George because Katie was only 18. But then that guy came out and was like, I never said that. I also didn't even really know any of you, let alone how old you guys were. Katie then said that she was just confused on who sent it, which is kind of a weird excuse because she's definitely having the people around her read her responses before she posts them. And it's probably the same people who gave her the screenshot. So they probably would have caught it if it was like an accident. If she really wanted to prove that it was an innocent mistake, she would have to come out with exactly who sent her the screenshot and exactly who sent the text message because she hasn't explained either of those to my knowledge, which looks like it was kind of just an attempt where I doubt that it was her. I don't think she, if the screenshot is photoshopped, I don't think she photoshopped it because that would be bold and that would just like, if she did do that, then she is, I bet someone gave it to her and told her that it was from someone 
who it wasn't from. So other than this making it more difficult for future victims to come out, what else does this hurt? One word, networking. Creators can no longer rely on if they don't do anything wrong, they won't have anything to worry about because this situation proved the exact opposite. Because of this, they're gonna be a lot more wary of who they're hanging around and who they're letting into their circles because they can't risk their careers with being too trusting because clearly they have to be like very, very, very careful because this all also like blows up so much. Something this small turned into such a massive thing and George almost lost like a lot from it. Like these are huge internet figures so they have to really be pretty careful because they're very high profile. They have a lot at stake. And as another 19 year old girl trying to make it in the space, it kind of sucks because People probably aren't going to want to be hanging around 19 year old girls anymore. No one wants to risk putting their careers in jeopardy. And if a 19 year old girl is going to put their career in jeopardy, they're probably not going to f with it. And I love talking to people, which sucks. I'm so good at networking. So it's lame. Honestly, I haven't even, this hasn't affected me at all one bit. I don't know why I'm bitching, but just saying. Also, not that I want to hang around the dream SMP because I think my brain cells would literally start falling out of my ass, but they're probably not the only ones who are taking notes of this situation and applying them to their lives. But yeah, this whole situation is really lame and pretty annoying and definitely did not need to reach the internet. It definitely did more harm than good and nothing even really happened as for whether or not i think he's a misogynist based on the clip that was provided with the accusation um no i'm not even gonna play the clip because it's literally nothing but it basically just consists of this smaller streamer in an among us lobby with george and a bunch of other people and the part that she says is him being a misogynist is literally him just ignoring her. She made a random comment about George being the imposter and he was just ignoring her. And when he ignored her, she said it over and over and over again and he just kept ignoring her. To say this is an example of misogyny is just a joke to any movement ever. To think the only reason why someone could be ignoring you is because you're a girl is low-key kind of vain might just be annoying maybe have you thought about that that could possibly be it if anything she could have accused him of being like stuck up or like think he's like too famous to talk to her which probably isn't even true but it would make more sense than misogyny but yeah saying stuff like this is misogyny is really not very good for any women's empowerment movement whatsoever it just literally makes it look like a joke and makes it harder for people to take actual circumstances of misogyny seriously so thanks you're ruining it and it just really upsets me because there's people who are genuinely working hard to combat misogyny and actual misogynist experience it just makes it 10 times harder for them to do what they're trying to do but anyways final take i think that these people are kind of ridiculous and really cringe looking into this when i was like actually trying to like really look into it um they're all so cringe i heard i heard a lot of like we were play fighting. Thinking about two adults like play fighting with each other actually makes me want to like high dive into an empty pool. That sounds so insufferable. So insuff maybe I'm glad that they wouldn't let me around because if I witnessed that like I think I would actually like rip my brain out of my ear. But yeah that's what I think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a fun time talking about this. But yeah if you enjoyed you could give me a thumbs up if you want. And your guys' comments are really funny to me. Except I'm getting some people who are like, You're shit talking! And I'm like, and it's so hard to not like reply to these people as like a former Reddit troller. It's all I want to do is just fucking, ugh. I want to reply so bad, but that's not the way when you're the one in the video. So most of you guys are really cool. And sometimes you guys like reiterate exactly what my video was about but in a much more clear way 
And I'm like, damn, you guys should be doing this. But yeah, you guys are really cool. But you can follow me on Instagram if you want. Rose.Adamucci. Have a good one. Bye.